I gotta keep my cool. <laughs> Today, not being mean is gonna be a challenge, which I am going to fail. <laughs> so in the most shocking turn of events, influencers sold out to promote Shein and spread basically North Korean levels of propaganda to their audience. And there is just so much damage done right now. Before we get into it, remember to like this video and also the algorithm brought you to these videos because it knows you're gonna like it. So don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise you might miss out on more fun content that I make in the future where I am less frustrated than I am today. <laughs> so a now deleted Instagram reel from a sponsored influencer's trip to a Shein factory went viral for all the wrong reasons. So let's take a look. China trip has been one of the most life-changing trips of my life. Getting to see the whole process of Shein clothing from beginning to end with my own two eyes was so important for me. Kicking off the trip by heading to the factory of the leading manufacturer for Shein was the perfect way to start. I was really excited and impressed to see the working conditions. The next day we headed to the Shein Innovation Center. This facility blew my mind. It's over 600,000 square feet. There's so much technology and Shein is just such a developed and complex company and it was so beautiful to see firsthand. I was able to interview a woman that worked in the fabric cutting department and you guys know me, she's an investigative journalist. So the woman working at the fabric cutting department is the investigative journalist or is she is she referring to herself as a as she? Is the investigative journalist in the room with us right now? Oh, there's more. So I asked her all of our questions and she answered them honestly and authentically. She was very surprised at all of the rumors that have been spread in the US. She told me about her family, her lifestyle, her commute, her hours. The woman working in the fabric cutting department was shook with all the rumors spread about their working conditions. Why do I find that very hard to believe? Why are we not hearing it first of all from her mouth? I would like confirmation on this discussion. Also, what if, crazy wild idea here, you're following a script. And actually Shein just told you to include that in your little North Korean level propaganda video. This reminds me so much of these videos I've seen of North Korea where they bring in Westerners to show them like how amazing things actually are in North Korea and they hire a bunch of people or just intimidate them to like stand in rooms in empty rooms with computers that have like a screenshot PDF image of Google displayed on the screen. And this is like actual footage of this in North Korea where people are just staged in situations to pretend like they have access to the internet to pretend like things aren't terrible there. And this is what this really reminds me of. Let's move on. The in warehouse, this place was massive. It's about 84 acres and almost fully run by technology and automation. I was really impressed by the extensive checklist that each item had to go through where it shipped off. I think my biggest takeaway from this trip is to be an independent thinker, get the facts and see it with your own two eyes. Is there narrative? She did not say that. <laughs> she did not just say be an independent thinker while she's reciting a script that she and gave her and while she's pocketing money that she and paid her so that she can make this content on her free little trip to China. This is undoing a decade of activism in the sustainability and ethical fashion field. Being an independent thinker now is being paid by the corporation that uses sweatshop labor, slave labor, child labor to produce their products in unsafe, even deadly working conditions while manufacturing products that are completely destroying the environment. Be an independent thinker and like be paid by those people to tell your audience that they're actually great by showing them one factory. Okay, moving on. The narrative fed to us in the US and I'm one that always likes to be open-minded and seek the truth. So I'm grateful for that about myself and I hope the same for you guys. Are you grateful for that about yourself though? Are you? Are you Danny Dimka grateful for that about yourself because you did take the post down and you did issue a semi-apology? This real on Instagram is an embarrassment for all content creators out there. This is why we are made fun of. 
because of stuff like this, because of people selling out. I think this whole fiasco could have been avoided if these influencers had taken one of the many content creation courses available on Skillshare. What an amazing transition that was into today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes. And I've been using their platform for many years now to explore and improve my own creative interests from writing, photography, illustration, journaling. But did you know that Skillshare has hundreds of career focused classes as well? Skillshare teachers will guide you step by step through turning your talent or ideas into a full on career. These last few months, I've been working on growing and improving my YouTube channel. So I've been deep diving into content creation classes on Skillshare. The class Speak Your Truth, Mindful Content Creation on YouTube by YouTuber and podcaster Heinz has stood out to me because even though I'm posting more often, I've also been neglecting my social life, my health, and my fitness to do that. And the sixth lesson about building a calendar was the guide and the reminder that I needed right now to become more mindful with how much time I spend working. So get started with reaching your career goals this year by clicking the link in the description and the first 1000 subscribers will get a one month trial of Skillshare for free. I'm going to need a moment. <laughs> to just scream into this pillow. <laughs> Is this creator right? Are we all just not open-minded enough? Do we need to be better independent thinkers and start questioning the work of all of these investigative journalists that are going undercover in all of these sweatshops that are manufacturing clothing for all of these fast fashion companies and are uncovering like countless human rights violations? What do you think? Is this a possibility? I don't know, maybe let's let's look it up. Remake Our World is an Instagram page that shares a ton of information on sustainable fashion and the countless human rights violations that fast fashion corporations participate in. And they posted this meme of Kourtney Kardashian with a sign being like, Travis, I'm pregnant. And they Photoshopped the pregnant part and they wrote, Travis Sheen's latest influencer trip is propaganda. They also said an investigation into Sheen's supply chain revealed that its Chinese workers are toiling 75 plus hours a week with only one day off per month, earning piece rate pay while working in hazardous locations. They also posted Sheehan uses more than 6,000 factories and only shares limited information on 700 of them. 27% of the 700 factories audited had insufficient fire and emergency preparedness. 14% violated working hours standards. And these influencers saw only one factory and from that came to the conclusion that all factories are like that. That makes a lot of sense. We're not being used as puppets to spread propaganda for the benefit of multinational fast fashion corporations. No, can't be that. The other slide says journalists and reputable sources have well-documented proof of how unethical Sheehan is globally, not just in the US. Tell me, what is the motivation? Who is paying these journalists to spread this misinformation. To lighten the mood, neoliberal hell on Instagram made a post about this as well. Someone tweeted, we hit the Sheehan sweatshop propaganda stage of capitalism. I wonder if they gave her a tour of the room where they put lead in the clothing and that's what made her so stupid. Had to check out the caption. Did she really say that hating Sheehan is racism? She's taking the post down now, but this is a screenshot of her caption. She said, it's hard for me to even put into words how this trip has impacted me. Not only getting to see with my own two eyes what the entire process of Shein clothing looks like from beginning to end, but also getting to experience China surrounded by people born and raised there completely expanded my mind and just further confirmed how important travel and perspective is. You have to remember our country is filled with so much prejudice. We want to believe we're the best and no one else can be better. But what if we're just different and no one is better than another? We can accept our differences and be intrigued by the individuality of it all. We have so much prejudice against the Chinese people and we need to support their exploitation. The fact that we don't want them to be working in sweatshops and getting severely underpaid and like <laughs> exploited and working in unsafe conditions is now prejudice. Make it make sense. Please make it make sense. I too have been to China. I used to work as a flight attendant and I flew there many times and it's a beautiful country. The people are very kind and welcoming and I would think that we would all want the best for them and not want to support their exploitation and their abuse so that we can just endlessly and mindlessly consume. But I guess like I'm just a racist. <laughs> if 
she in is deep into your pockets and you're still struggling to be convinced. The working conditions for the people that are manufacturing fast fashion clothing are unacceptable. Let's just watch a quick TikTok about it. Do you care about the slaves making your clothes? The Cut released an article about the largest fast fashion company, Shein, and a journalist posing as a fake worker filmed inside the factories that supply to the fast fashion giant. In one factory, they found that workers receive a base salary of 4,000 UN, which is $556 per month, to make 500 pieces of clothing per day, and their first month's pay is withheld from them. In another factory, workers receive the equivalent to 4 cents per item. Workers in both factories were found to be- 4 cents. The cost of living in China is not low enough for someone to get by being paid four cents to manufacture a t-shirt. Working up to 18 hours per day and they only get one day off per month. They find women washing their hair during their lunch breaks and they were fined two thirds of their daily wage if they made a single mistake. The reported hours and working conditions violate China's labor laws. Jane has repeatedly come under fire for having poor working conditions with having high levels of toxic chemicals in their clothing, mishandling customer data and copying independent designers. Not to mention they list up to 10,000 new items on their website daily, which is the largest contribution to the 100 100 billion clothing items that are made annually and 92 million tons of it ends up in landfill every single year. That's the equivalent to one garbage truck every second, all of which is produced off the back of modern day slavery. Learning more about Shein's business model, let me know your thoughts. Is not supporting them racism? As if that one Instagram reel was not enough, a lot more influencers posted about it. I found two more on social media while some others had taken down their posts. Also, I very kindly ask you to not go over to any of these content creators and leave any comments, any hateful comments. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to engage with these accounts at all. But yeah, let's look at this reel. We drove two hours out of the city to the Shein Innovation Factory, where basically they produce the clothing samples to ship off to the warehouses to make. That's interesting that she pointed out they're making the samples there. This is not even a Shein factory. Upon interviewing the workers, a lot of them were really confused and taken back with the child labor questions and the lead in the clothing questions because they basically said our kids want to be on social media just like y'all. They're not working in factories and our clothing grows through rigorous testing before production. When I ask them questions like, what does your work week look like? How many hours do you work? What's your commute? Most of them work like eight to six and their commute is like 10 to 15 minutes, just like normal. I expected this facility to be so filled with people just slaving away, but I was actually pleasantly surprised that a lot of these things were robotic. And honestly, everybody was just working like normal, like chill, sitting down. They weren't even sweating. We were the ones sweating walking through the whole facility. We still got so much to unpack. So come back for part four. Oh boy, do we have stuff to unpack here. Uh, the comment about the workers not even sweating was... <laughs> I gotta laugh. I gotta laugh. Otherwise, I'm gonna start screaming. At least everyone in the comments is not buying it. But this post has 15,000 likes. This is 15 and a half thousand people exposed to this propaganda that are buying it. I am so worried that this is undoing decades of activism to educate people on the impact of fast fashion. Another content creator that was invited on the Shein propaganda trip, she's posted about her trip in China, but I think she might have taken down the post about the factory and posted this very defensive TikTok. And her caption is this, if that is what you think makes change, you are also the problem. Everyone has the choice to shop from whoever they want. It is your responsibility to do your own research. I can only speak from my personal experiences. If you don't like fast fashion, don't shop from it. My audience is mainly college students that like affordable fashion, so that is most of my content. If you don't like that, you can unfollow. This is not a place to spread hate and harassment. This sounds like a lot of deflecting. This looks like someone is not taking responsibility or trying to educate themselves. Listen, I completely understand that if you are plus size, if you have a super low budget, that it is unavoidable to shop from fast fashion brands. What is unacceptable though, is as a content creator to profit out of promoting them. My question here is where do we draw the line at slavery? Like at what point does slavery become something that is acceptable for you to profit from? Okay, so your audience is broke college students. So now it's okay for you to pocket money out of 
companies that produce blood clothing? It's okay because your audience doesn't have a huge budget? Or is it your responsibility as a content creator to figure out a way around that? Is your responsibility as a content creator to not sell out your audience and like find ways for them to dress themselves in an affordable way without you profiting out of the exploitation of garment workers. Your audience is plus size women. Does that now mean that it's okay for you to profit off of slavery? Like where do we draw the line between slavery being a bad thing and slavery being something that it's okay for you to profit out of? Where do we draw the line? Is there a line? Because in my mind, there is no line. Slavery has always been not acceptable. Slavery has always been something that I am not going to profit out of. And I understand the position that these influencers are in. I started off as a fashion blogger way before I knew anything about sustainable fashion, way before I even knew what a sweatshop was. And one of the first fashion videos that I made here on YouTube, I was showing vegan fashion inspiration and people in the comments called me out and they were like, you care about animals, but humans don't really count in your book. And when I received those comments, what did I not do? I didn't get defensive. What did I not do? Issue a pseudo apology. What did I do? I educated myself. I watched the sweatshop documentary. A bunch of influencers are sent to work at a sweatshop in Bangladesh and you get to see from the Westerner's perspective how truly abhorrent those working conditions are. Then after that, I watched the True Cost documentary and since then, a multitude of documentaries and investigative articles have been released. Again, proving how horrendous working conditions are in sweatshops that are manufacturing clothing for fast fashion companies. There is no room left to question whether or not fast fashion is produced ethically. There is just no scenario on this planet, at least, where that's happening. Any information that you receive about ethical and sustainable fast fashion is the biggest bullshit propaganda that you have ever been sold. Up until that point, I had also been working with fast fashion brands in exchange for product or store credit, which is actually unacceptable. But I had like business relationships with people working at H&M, for example, here in Greece. But once I learned what I learned, what did I do? Did I apologize? Did I deflect? Did I come up with excuses? Did I victimize myself? No, what I did was I used my platform to educate my audience on everything that I had learned. And I even got a call from the head marketing department of H&M here in Greece. And this lady's on the phone and she's complaining to me about why am I making a video shit talking H&M? And I was like, because I was unaware of how shitty H&M was. And then she replied to that with like a load of bullshit about how she was also young and virtuous, but now she knows better and that like the company is not as bad as the investigative journalists are making it seem. And I was like, well, <laughs> we'll have to disagree on that. And the thing is like back then it was a lot more acceptable to not have any idea of what was happening. Like Rana Plaza happened in 2014 and I was just deep into just worshiping fast fashion back then. And I did not hear anything about it. I only learned about Rana Plaza after I got educated about fast fashion. So there is like a tremendous amount of covering up of how destructive fast fashion is, how deadly fast fashion is. But like back then it was just me and like literally a handful of other YouTube channels and Instagram accounts talking about sustainable and ethical fashion. Now there's hundreds of thousands of people speaking up and educating their audience. And still we are not reaching the ears of the mainstream. We are fighting a powerful machine. And we're doing this with a very insignificant budget, a very tiny amount of influence compared to all the mainstream influencers out there that are participating in spreading this type of propaganda, that are participating in working with and promoting fast fashion corporations. And we, the ethical and sustainable fashion community, just do not have the budget to really compete with this 
fast fashion machine. We don't have Shein's advertisement budget. We rely on you, the audience, to really do your part and talk to your friends and your family about this, to share videos and TikToks and reels and Instagram posts that educate people. And so I hate to do this because I don't like asking people to do things, but please, engage with content like this. If you don't like me, I have listed a bunch of sustainable and ethical fashion content creators and just generally mindful content creators in the description box below, and you can share their content. And not only sharing with people that you know, sharing on the platforms that you have, but also engagement means creating a general buzz online so the algorithms can pick up writing blog posts, writing articles, and linking to all of these sustainable influencers. A simple thing is like going on Reddit and sharing a video, sharing a post, even in a negative context is so helpful for algorithms to start picking up our content and promoting it to people. The more my and other content creators, videos and posts are talked about and discussed and linked to online in other platforms, the more YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram's algorithms are triggered to promote our content and our platforms to other people. And I think that's really important to keep in mind. Don't be just a passive viewer. I hate being preachy. I hate asking people to do things for me, but I feel like it's necessary to give you a little reminder that the more engagement and buzz is created, the more the algorithm pushes the content. Unfortunately, this is how it works on social media now. And the thing is like, we are not only fighting this machine of fast fashion, we're also competing against a bunch of content creators that really do not give a shit about their audience and will sell them out at like the first paycheck that they get. Obviously the most disappointing part for me is spreading fast fashion propaganda. The other thing that deeply disappoints me is the fact that these content creators have no respect for their audience and really make influencing this very looked down upon profession. A real influencer, should recognize that they're a role model to other people. And it's just very unfortunate that most of the mainstream content creators out there not only do not recognize the responsibility that they have towards their audience, but also they're just like contributing to making things endlessly worse. I'm still very much optimistic that we can turn things around. And the first step to do that is educating people. And then after that come policy changes. And after that comes improvement for the garment workers. But education is the first step here and we're not even there yet. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and uh, don't forget to engage. If you're going to engage in one video, this one probably should be it, but yeah. Also, obviously, everything that I'm wearing today is thrifted. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> that was so corny.